my friend Davy D, who is my mentor. Oh, um, shout out to Davy D. You D. kidding me? Yes, I know Davy D. Yeah. Davy D is one of the most respected journalists to ever do it. And mm -hmm. I, I learned, you know, growing up in the Bay, I learned a lot about activism through my mother, um, through my family, my grandparents. And when I got into uh, the music industry, I was already into music culture. Mm -hmm. Davy D was one of those people who were active on the streets and um, utilizing platforms like we do now. Um, you know, we all came up and he was using uh, community radio. Um, at, at that time, and then 106 KML, the station that King Tech and I um, eventually got hired to. I got Davy D on the line right now. Oh, this is a okay, surprise. Wow. Hey, right. Davy D, welcome to Davey the show. Davy D, what's up? Hey, what up, y'all? How y'all doing? Can you hear me clear? Yeah, mm -hmm. we can hear you clear. You live on the air with uh, Heather B and me. It's uh, Sway in the morning, uh, say four or five, Davy. It's it's good to hear you. Good to see you or hear you, Sway, and good to hear you, Heather. How y'all doing? Love to you, family. We 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 yeah. every day we maintain it, Davy. We we're talking to the the listeners. Um, I know it's a movement going on today. Um, where a lot of folks aren't in the music business, aren't going to work. But I, I and I and I support however people uh, choose to be activists. The show must be paused, and I support those sisters who put it together. But I we needed to be on air because we we it's essential that we're able to communicate and pass on information. You know what I mean? While we're uh, okay. while we're in these times, that's something you and I that's in our DNA. That's what we've done. I know that's what I've done for 30 years on the radio, you know. Um, Man, it's been. Yeah. So uh, no, but I wanted to Heather brought up something that's really interesting. And I know that you, along with uh, a, a lot of other DJs, over 10,000 signatures on a petition, have been trying to bring attention to what's going on with DJs. Heather p talked about posting a song that she wrote. It was her song she owned on her own YouTube page, and they flagged it <laughs> for her to take it yeah. down. You know, and you and I had a long conversation just the other week about what's going on on these digital platforms and why are DJs right now um, in an uproar because a lot of them are going on live. Heather, you see a lot of different DJs go live on there. Uh, Instagram live feed and then they get flagged or they get shut down. Davey and um, Alex Mejia, who's another uh, well-known uh, pioneer and DJ out of the Bay Area and has always been a, a, a DJ advocate, um, are spearheading a movement to bring attention and petition against what's being done to these DJs. Davey, can you kind of talk about what we're seeing and what, spirit, what, what sparked this? Well, I mean, it started off with everybody being in the shutdown mode during the pandemic. And everybody was out of work. Everybody was traumatized from what was going on. Mm -hmm. And what you saw was the number of DJs who were out of work started just to build community. I mean, one thing about music is that it brings people together. Above and beyond the music industry, music is a natural expression in every single culture. And it's not just who's the best singer. It's about the whole community sings. I mean, go to any people and you'll see that that is a, that is a mode in which we bond. And, and so when DJ started playing, this was something that opened up, you know, uh, people's emotions and allowed them to gather. I think everybody who saw D Nice or, or listened to D Nice that weekend understood that for the first time during that pandemic, everybody felt like they were close and that they were they had a different emotion. That you felt charged up, you felt ready to to do something, you know, different. And so a lot of DJs started saying, "Look, I, you know, I was the centerpiece." for my community in Oakland or New York or Arkansas or wherever it is that they're at. Mm -hmm. And they got online and they started playing the music and people in their neighborhood and their friends and relatives would start to tune in and, and everybody would listen. And all of a sudden, they were getting flagged and they were getting booted and their, their feeds were being shut down. And it was simple things like um, there was a dad that was playing music for his kids that were on a Facebook Live. So they were all having like a little virtual party. And all of a sudden they got flagged and cut down and, you know, they got warnings. I was doing a, um, a, a, uh, a gathering where there were young kids here, along with our congresswoman, Barbara Lee, and they were raising money 
and awareness for people who didn't have masks. And in the middle of our seat, and we're talking like the congresswoman, we're talking about city officials, we're talking about all these students, that got, you know, they got flagged, you know, for playing music in the background. You know, like, mm. oh, yeah, let's play uh, uh, Frankie Beverly and Maze or something. Mm. Everybody's feeling it, and, and, and all of a sudden you're shut off. And so this was happening to people all over. So that's the first thing, is that there was a disruption in people being able to come together and feel like they were part of a community with music being the bonding agent. The second thing is is that everybody was told they needed to sacrifice there are hella people that's all they do is DJ, and they lost everything. They lost their income. They're not going to have any opportunity for the next 20 months or whatever. To t- I think it's 2021 it comes back. So everybody was asked to tighten up and do something. So why, why didn't the labels tighten up? Why didn't the labels look at this emergency situation or the platforms and say, you know what, let everybody live for a while, and then we can figure out how to kind of tweak this or renegotiate the terms of this new reality Mm because people got to be on digital space. Mm -hmm. So if I have this, if I have the guy next door who DJs, who, who doesn't have any income right now, no income. And his only, his only passion is the music. How dare you make millions of dollars and shut him down? Wasn't it David Geffen or somebody who sat up there and sent a, a, a picture from a yacht, when people are sitting up there like, what, you're in a yacht and folks are dying from a pandemic? Mm-hmm. Ah, you know, that's that's a that's a slap in the face for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, that angered folks. And I think it overlooked the fact that many DJs have invested lots of money. I know I pay for all my records. I don't get a lot of these for free. Mm-hmm. I can show you my receipts. You know, mm-hmm. even during this pandemic, I bought hell of music, you know, supporting everybody. I bought your records, I bought Heather's records, and everybody else's. So I kind of purchased these, and all I'm doing as a DJ is playing that music that people love, you know. And sure, they may hear something and go, wow, I didn't know about that artist, let me go get it. But here we are being shut off by somebody who is collecting money mm-hmm. for the for the music that's being played. So it's not like you know, it's not like they didn't get paid. They 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 they're making money hand hand over fist. So that's just on one level, and then it's just people in general. I mean, how many virtual happy hours did people have? You think they just get on Zoom or whatever and have a virtual happy hour or Facebook Live and have a virtual happy hour? No, they play some music. Oh, this is our favorite song. This is the new artist that came out. Remember back in the days. And here you have, you know, somebody who really didn't make an investment in the community at all. We made the investment in the conditions that inspired an artist to do some of the music. And then we, in turn, uplifted that music. And then you're snatching pretty much a basic, important part of our culture. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. The cornerstone. You're taking art. A cornerstone. You're taking our expression, putting a, a monetary value on it, and then shutting it down and, and preventing people from from using it. So mm-hmm. I would just close in saying that the artist, you know, respectfully makes music because of the community. You know, they see certain conditions and they reflect that in their in their offering, and we in turn appreciate that and uplift that artist. And then you have a label that comes in where many of those people don't even care about our conditions. They're not actively trying to change it, but they want to collect money off it. Our our joys, our triumphs, our challenges, our hurt and pain, and many people were hurting, hurting for the past three months, out of work for the past three months, you know, not knowing what people lost lives over the past three months, and you couldn't let people play some damn music? You know, that's a middle finger with all my heart to those that would shut that down. That's a real middle finger. I mean, because, you know, people had funerals and they couldn't really go to the thing. Mm -hmm. So they're having Mm -hmm. wakes and things online and you're shutting them down. You are shutting them down. Why would you do that? I'm just angry because I know how people felt on that. I know what people went through on that. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the type of, 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 of upsetness that people were feeling when they were just doing something simple, which is in a natural thing, like sharing 
their culture with mm-hmm. other people because they couldn't be together. And here you come as a middleman shutting it down. Mm. Davey, uh, and this, um, you guys put together a petition and, and over, I want to say at the time I talked to Alex, over 10,000 folks had signed it. What is the petition for? Who is it to? And what is the goal? Well, the petition is what's to the social pla- social media platforms, um, you know, in particular Facebook and Instagram, because those are the ones that were shutting it down. Some people said go to the labels, but we don't know what their deal with the labels are. We don't mm-hmm. know if they're allowed to do certain things, if they're not. Um, now, of course, you know, Facebook came, you know, came back and they were like, well, you can play 90 minutes of music or blah, blah, blah. But that may be because people found other platforms, but these labels are now starting to go after these other platforms. So it's like a never ending battle. And I think the main thing where we're at is that I definitely have made my calls to Congress people. I definitely went to legislatures and, you know, trying to give people a, a, a political understanding of what's happening, that we're in different times now. Rules are changing. So if you're saying that we can't go back to normal, then we can't go back to normal. You know, if, if people are going to be out of work for the next, um, you know, year or so, mm-hmm. then we're going to be on these platforms. And you don't, get to, you don't get to kind of dictate what the majority of people in this country are centered around, which is music. You don't get to shut that down. Uh-huh. The same way that if I have to go to school now, i got to wear a mask. Or if we want to work, we got to work from home. Everybody's making a sacrifice, and every single label needs to make that same sacrifice as well. Otherwise, then you exemplify the type of inequality that people are now starting to see and are really upset about. This is Davey D. Cook, man. Um, can you give out your information if people want to continue this conversation? But I would love to see if, if, if after hearing what he said, and if, if you feel for this plight to the citizens, is there somewhere they can go to sign a petition? Yeah, this it's hashtag hashtag let the DJs play, which you can get on change dot org. There's a website called let the DJs play uh, dot com, and um, you'll you'll see the stuff there. You know, we've been passing it out. Um, there's a video which all the DJs, uh, a lot of DJs have put together um, to to bring attention to this plight, and so um, we're we're going from there. You know, the next steps will be to talk to you know, lawmakers and and everybody else, or find alternatives. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get too greedy. I mean, find a, find a happy medium um, where, where people can, can, can basically live. And and I'll say one last thing. Um, The irony of some of this is that people were getting flagged as Heather was talking about for music that they made. So, you know, Mm -hmm. here we are in the Bay area, (laughs) Uh right? So this hella artists that we know, you know, to be honest, I don't have to play any of these major labels, as you know. I mean, there's, there's all kind of people that we know. We could do a whole 10 days of music just with local artists. Mm-hmm. We were getting flagged with the local artists. And they're sitting there. They're, some of them were DJing. Like, yo, they just flagged me. Ain't that your music? So what they were doing, they have a blanket flagging. And then you have to go back and fight it and be like, nah, that was my music. And then they'll lift it or mm-hmm. unsuspend you or whatever penalty He's they put exactly on you. Right, but citizens. that don't do you no yep. good. That don't, that, don't do, that don't do you no good when it happened during an event that you were doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like you, you, you're doing a little graduation thing and get, and get bumped for playing your own music, your own music sway. Yeah, I mean, you know, so <laughs> that's crazy. Right? That's crazy. Kind of, yeah, that, that, crazy. Or, that, or we that, might play something like I know you, so I have your record. But hey, it was on Giant Records, which was on, it was on Giant Brothers. Warner Brothers. Yeah, and they would flag right? you. So yeah, yeah, and they would flag you, even though ain't nobody played that record in you know since ninety one or ninety two. You well, know, go, like, come on, oh, Dave, yeah, give me a little more credit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I'm saying I know what I'm, you're I'm saying. Pulling, the record I'm, came out. I'm, I'm joking I'm, with you, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. pulling the I'm pulling the B side cut that would be a Bay Area favorite. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That people go, oh man, we forgot about that, and here comes a, a tag. Like really? Like do I need to call him? And then even if I call you, 
then it'll be like, yeah, well, he's cool, but I think the label has a portion of this say so, so we can't really do it. And, and that, that goes the problem. And that goes back to the inequality that you're talking about that inspired this movement today, the disproportionate wealth that the labels have benefited from from this black music art form. But when I signed that giant Warner Brothers deal in an 80 page contract, it was so much language in there that some of the stuff I didn't fully comprehend possibly. And, and also you're taught that it's the only way it can happen is if you do certain things and then you put in a right. conundrum that if I don't give up this, then I won't get fat. And not everybody has to have the wherewithal that Heather had to say, nah, that's uh, that's unnegotiable. You know, it was a lot yeah. of rights that, you know, people get taken advantage of. Davey, I want to give out that information again. If the citizens want to join this petition, where can they sign? So it's hashtag let the DJs play on change.org. And there's a website, let the DJs play.com. Oh, so I've got to shout out DJ Platten, who's another legendary DJ, just the 45 sessions. He's been a big part of that. Um, Eric Arnold's been a part of that. So it's not Eric just, Arnold. I mean, it's not, yeah. just my, my, it's not just Alex and myself, but there's a number of people that have jumped on. I think most of the DJs around here, and there's a lot, um, who have solidly gotten behind this above and beyond. You know, this is, this is, this is our culture. I mean, we, we shaped and helped, um, bring these you know all these communities together with with our passion for music so mm -hmm. i'm just man okay well man thank you when everybody else is making a sacrifice yeah um davy thank you for speaking that up okay mm -hmm. it just came to mind heather brought that story up i was like i gotta call davy i gotta call davy um thank you for that davy and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep this exposure going okay appreciate it y'all have a good one at you you too all right, uh, that's Davy D. Uh, Davy D. Cook, look him up, follow him. Uh, like I said, a friend of mine, mentor of mine, I actually presented him with a, a me along with a lot of the Bay Area le uh, legendary radio personalities, uh, Renell, Chewy, all these different KK, um, all came out and uh, gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, Count Black.